Hey folks, Dr. Gersmar from Aspire Natural Health. I wanted to talk today about the SIBO test. So SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, a big issue these days, and a standard stool test like we do for many other digestive issues, or we might in fact be doing for you is great, will tell us a lot about the digestion, but it won't tell us about whether SIBO is present. So we need another test specifically designed to look at SIBO. The good news about the SIBO test is there is no, there's no poop involved or anything else. It is a breath collection test. So let's take a look at it. We are currently using the Genova test kit called the Bacterial Overgrowth. This is the SIBO test kit. So you'll see this in the front slipped in here, we have the form. If you've heard me talk about the form before, you can skip ahead of this section, but let me run through the form just in case anyone hasn't seen it. So we'll open the form. All Genova forms are gonna be very similar. Up at the top, you'll see a section for my signature. If we've been in the office and we've given you a kit, this will be signed. If we've sent you the test kit, then it won't be signed and that is okay because we've had Genova specifically send you a kit. Uh, they know and expect it to come back. So it's going to be okay. So. Genova has two, there's two main ways that we pay for these tests. One is easy pay. The second is the full cash price, the full price cash pay for the test. All right. Uh, the SIBO test or the bacterial overgrowth is currently not covered by insurance. So this is going to be a cash pay. So you'll see uh, the bottom bar box should be marked here. No insurance billing cash pay. Over here on the side, you will see bacterial overgrowth will be checked. So review quickly signature up here not if we've sent you the test kit uh, insurance does not pay for this test so no insurance test the icd codes here do not are not required because we're not billing for insurance uh, the test up here will be checked and you will need to fill out the the date that you collect the samples we flip it over again the same for all genova tests you'll put in your personal information your name and address and such up here at the top insurance information you will not fill out you'll enclose a total amount for the test and sign the bottom personal information, no insurance information, you'll enclose the amount for the test and sign the bottom. Please make sure the form is filled out before you send the tests in. We have had a couple of tests arrive before with no information filled out on the test forms. We don't know who it came from and unfortunately Genova just has to throw away the test. So please do fill it out. All right, we open up the box, we look inside, we basically have the instructions. We're going to go over in just a moment. You have the complete sealed packet of all the materials that you'll need. You'll go through that. And then you'll have the FedEx shipping envelope and instructions underneath. So let's go ahead and go through the instructions. We're going to take a few moments to review them. Please take a moment to read these before the day before or a couple days before you're going to do the test. The SIBO test here, it's not difficult. There's no crazy body fluids that you need to, to get samples of, but there are a few preparatory pieces uh, that you need to do to make sure that you do the test correctly. So let's go ahead and go through those. Uh, first is that uh, they're recommending that uh, a, you don't take it until you've been four weeks from something like a colonoscopy or enema, and two weeks if you've been using antibiotics, antifungals, or Pepto-Bismol. All right, if you and I have talked and we've made some alternate suggestions, then that is completely fine. But generally speaking, we don't wanna mess with the gut flora for a couple of weeks before we take this test. So four weeks from colonoscopy, two weeks from antibiotics, antifungals, or Pepto-Bismol. The week before, if at all possible, stop all laxatives or stool softeners. Again, if we've talked in our visit and said something different, that's completely fine, but as general, generally speaking, we want to avoid laxatives and stool softeners and stool bulking agents for one week beforehand. Again, I'm trying not to mess with the gut bacteria. So typically we're gonna get up, we need an hour from when we wake up in the morning, all right? So let me back up a second. There are a few things before that. Uh, just in general, no smoking or secondhand smoke an hour before you take the test. That can just influence the gases that are coming out of your lungs that the test is trying to measure and mess it up. All right, so we've talked about two weeks, uh, not messing with it. Ideally, a week off of any 
uh, antacids. Again, if we have made some exceptions, uh, then that's fine. So let me pull this together again because the instructions are a little scattered. So ideally four weeks from anything like a colonoscopy or an enema, two weeks from antibiotics or antifungals, one week from stool softeners, laxatives, stool bulking agents, or antacids, and then no smoking uh, an hour before the test. Now, that's all the things to avoid. The day before you're taking the test, so let's imagine it's Wednesday today, to, you decide that Wednesday you're gonna get up and do this test, so Tuesday, you're gonna make some dietary changes. And here is what they recommend. So, the day before your test, you must limit your diet. Here are the foods that you can eat. So the day before that Tuesday, you'd have a very restricted diet. They're recommending baked or broiled chicken, fish, or turkey with only salt and pepper as spices, only white bread if you're consuming bread, eggs, plain steamed white rice, clear chicken, or beef broth with no vegetables. So a very limited diet for the one day beforehand. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, we should have talked about it or we will need to talk about it and we can make some, some changes to that. But once again, the day before, baked or broiled chicken, fish, or turkey with only salt or pepper, white bread if you're consuming bread, eggs, plain steamed white rice, clear chicken, or beef broth. All right. So we've gone from four weeks to two weeks to one week to the day before. Now 12 hours before you're gonna stop eating. So if you're planning to collect this sample at say eight o'clock in the morning, you won't wanna eat past 8 p.m. the day before. All right, you get up in the morning. Now for an hour, you need to be up and about for an hour before starting this test. No smoking in that first hour. You're going to be taking the test Fast it again, so you'll get up in the morning, be up for an hour, and now you're ready to take the test. So the first thing that you do, they recommend that you go ahead and you'll take the lactulose solution. So inside here, lactulose is a special type of sugar uh, that we're using for this test, not digestible by human beings, very digestible by bacteria. So that's why we use it. And inside, you're going to find here, if you can see it, this little cup right here has this lactulose solution. So you'll start by taking that and dissolving it, stirring it into about eight ounces of water. Set that aside, let it dissolve, go ahead and go brush your teeth uh, and your tongue, including the back of your tongue, without using toothpaste or mouthwash. So we're just kind of cleaning out the mouth, give it a little scrub, a little rinse, but don't use toothpaste or mouthwash. You are now ready to go. So inside this kit here, you will find a little bag that you're going to blow into, along with a little receptacle that you can push the tubes into. So. You'll see inside here there are some tubes, that's where you're collecting the sample, and the little bag for breath. When you go to collect the sample, you're essentially picking it up. You have the tube in the slot, but not actually punctured. All right, folks, that was starting to get a little confusing, so I decided that we'd go ahead and just open up this bag and take a look. So when you open up the bag, you're going to see the lactulose solution here. You're going to see, here is the sample collection bag. We'll open that up so you can take a look at it. And then you're going to see the vials included as well. They look like this. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the sample collection bag. Almost there. All right, here we go. So you'll see it looks like this. So this is the end you're going to blow into. This is the little bag. And this is the side that the tube goes into. So like so. So you have stirred up the solution. You've brushed your teeth and you're ready to go. All right. We go ahead and take the sample bag like so. We put the tube in, but do not go ahead and push it all the way up to puncture it. All right, you're gonna blow into the bag gently. You don't need to you know, blow up the balloon, like so. And while you've got the bag inflated, you're gonna go ahead and press the tube in like this. 
and then pull the tube back out. They recommend having it inserted for no longer than two seconds. The issue here is we want to collect a sample of that breath into the tube without letting the room air that's around us get into the tube. The most common reasons that these tests come back to us as you know unusable is because too much room air has gotten into the tubes. All right, so they recommend that you're breathing normally. You're gonna go ahead and collect the sample like we just talked about. You're gonna take an inhale, then you'll hold it for five seconds. That's to try to let any of these gases that are being produced concentrate in your lungs before you go ahead and blow just like we talked about. Close your mouth tightly around the mouthpiece. Exhale normally, don't blow hard. While you're continuing to exhale normally with the bag expanded, go ahead and press the tube up and into the needle. Remove the tip tube within two seconds of puncturing and then, excuse me, then you are done. You can stop exhaling. There's no need to mess with the tube in any way. You're going to go ahead and record the time that you took the sample. You've now done your baseline sample. You're going to go ahead and drink that eight ounces of lactulose solution. Go ahead and drink it all down and start your timer. Whether it's a watch or a phone, you're going to start your timer. You're going to collect now five more samples. One 20 minutes later, the next 20 minutes after that. So we're going to say from zero, which is your when you drink the solution, 20 minutes later you collect a sample. At 40 minutes after you've begun, you collect a sample. 60 minutes, you collect a third sample. 90 minutes and 120 minutes, okay? So again, from the time you drink the sample, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. Please use your phone or a timer to keep track so you don't lose track of time and forget to collect a sample. This is a very time sensitive test. It doesn't need to be exactly, exactly 90 minutes, but look, we're talking within a couple of minutes, we need to have that sample collected. So please have it at a time where you can budget two hours where you'll be able to stop whatever you're doing and go ahead and collect the sample. All right, for each collection, you're gonna to want to, there are some stickers here that you're going to want to fill out as well. You're gonna need the time, your name, uh, and the test. All right, folks, once that is all done, you've collected all six samples, five plus the baseline sample, you are done. You've filled in the form that we talked about at the very beginning. Everything is labeled correctly so they know which samples are where. One other uh, note of caution is to go ahead um, and label each of those tubes as you do them. Because if you mix up the tubes or you're not sure when each collection was, it will be very difficult uh, and we may have incorrect results when it comes to the test. All right, folks, now that you've collected the sample, it's time to turn it in. So inside the box, you're gonna find a FedEx envelope along with stickers. You'll find the account numbers and the phone numbers that you need to call. You can call FedEx, um, give them the numbers. There is no extra charge to you. This is all covered by the lab and they will come, FedEx will come to your home or your work or wherever you'd like them to. Alternately, you can take this to a FedEx drop station and drop it there as well if you don't wanna um, have FedEx come to your place. So that is the SIBO test. Pretty straightforward. Uh, luckily, no collection of weird samples or anything else, but there is some timing and there is that prep beforehand. So remember we said four weeks, two weeks, one week, one day, 12 hours and one hour. Sounds really complicated, but please review the video and review the instructions so you do it correctly. It's a couple hours. We don't want you to waste your time, your effort, and your money. The biggest reason it gets sent back to us is because of too much room air contamination. So please make sure you take that nice breath in, hold it for five seconds, breathe out steadily and firmly, not aggressively. And then once that bag is full, push the violin, hold it for a second or two at most, and pull it right out so we don't get that room air contamination. All right, folks, the SIBO test is an important test. It is important to know if you think you have SIBO, we want to know whether it's really there or not because treatment can be quite aggressive um, depending on how severe the SIBO is and how difficult it is to treat. All right, folks, that does it for the SIBO test, also known as Genova's bacterial overgrowth. If you have any questions, concerns, or any issues that you need, please feel welcome 
to contact us. We look forward to getting the test results back and helping you get the care that you really need. All right, folks, take care.